Hi, welcome to How to Repair. Today we're going to be looking at Hotpoint and Indeset vented tumble dryers. This is not the condenser tumble dryer or the heat pump tumble dryer. This is the vented tumble dryer. I will be getting onto these later in the series of videos. Now this tumble dryer is an 8 kilo. This video will apply to the 7 and 8 kilo from Indeset Hotpoint vented. Now, the model number on this machine is I1D80WUK, and the hot point equivalent would be the H1D80WUK. And let me explain the first thing. Firstly, it's quite a well made machine for an entry level appliance. But because brands are so similar in clothing and cars and other things, the hot point version is £50 nearly more expensive than the Indeset version. But the components inside the machine are exactly the same. And I don't know how they warrant the difference in price apart from you're buying your designer label. That's it. I've gone through all the components on this tumble dryer, the filter, the motor, the belt, the heater, the small components like jockey wheels and etc. and bearings are all exactly the same. So save yourself the money and buy the lower rated machine which is the Indeset. It's very important because I do not understand how manufacturers can justify 50-60 pound difference in the machine for a badge. It's not a piece of fashion. It's a tumble dryer, because that's the first saving I can give you. The machine itself is one of the simplest to work on out of all the tumble dryers that I will be doing reviews on. Now, what we're going to do in this video is not only look at the running of the machine and go through the beneficial sides of the machine and the downfalls with the machine, but we will also be looking inside the machine and doing a tear down to see what modifications have been made on this tumble dryer over the last 15-20 years. Because this tumble dryer in design concept has been running for about 20 years. They got it right, they had a few problems with heating systems, a few problems with bearings in the old days, belts snapping because people overloading the machine, but we're going to have a look at how the machine has improved over the years and I'll give you my honest opinion uh, and totally independent to any of the manufacturers. So first thing, the machine is a very basic machine. Things I do not like on the machine. Firstly, we have a door system which has, seems to be improved. It's got a better gasket system in, than the old days, but I have heard some complaints uh, I haven't seen this myself, but when the machine is overloaded, uh, sometimes buttons can catch the edge of the filter. Now the filter is very easy to clean, just opens up, you clean out the mess that's in there, and then you put it back in. Every couple of months, make sure you put a vacuum cleaner down this hole here to make sure you remove any of the lint buildup. That's quite important because the more efficient the machine is, the quicker it will dry the clothes, less money on electricity. Now, the next thing I would say that was a problem with this machine in the early days was the bearing system. But looking at the stomatics on the machine now, the manufacturer has put a couple of support wheels in on the front of the machine that we'll have a look at, which now counteracts the leverage on the bearing system that used to be a problem. Uh, you used to have a shaft system and a pear-shaped bearing on the machine, which they still use, but now you have a couple of jockey wheels on the front, which are supported. The basis of the machine is simple. High and low heat, and a timer that runs from 160 minutes down to zero. Uh, a normal six, five, six kilo load uh, would take you about an hour of drying and it would use, in my opinion, depending on your room air temperature, somewhere in the region of four kilowatts. Now the vented dryers are using about an equal amount of electricity, slightly more, and I mean slightly, than the condenser dryers, but they're nowhere near as efficient as the heat pump dryers, but you are talking three, four hundred pound difference on some of the machines between a vented tumble dryer and a heat pump tumble dryer. And in my honest opinion, 
I think you would be better off using that extra money to put some solar onto your property uh, to be able to actually produce the electricity because I do not think you would gain the kilowatt saving on a heat pump dryer over the lifespan of the machine. But that will all be in another video. Um, so the basic function, high, low, timer, uh, and you've got a push start. I don't like the fact on this dryer that you are unable to start the machine at a set time to make use of uh, economy electricity. You may have a lower tariff of electricity at night and it would be a great option for this manufacturer to actually allow the machine to start at a certain time. A lot of the other companies now, uh, slightly more expensive tumble dryers, do have the option to select start in six hours, start in nine hours, or a preset time. So that's one feature I don't like. Uh, I'll just plug the machine quickly in for you. The machine is running at 65 decibels. As I said, it will take uh, they say a full load takes 129 minutes, but this does really depend on room temperature, how wet the clothing is, and many, many other factors. And maintenance on the machine is always an important thing that I said, making sure the filters are clean, this, that, and the other, and the clothes are spun well in the washing machine before transferring them to the tumble dryer, because you will use a lot less energy if the clothes are really wrung out before they go into the tumble dryer. Energy fishing, uh, sorry, energy, uh, energy efficiency rating is C. Most of the vented tumble dryers are this. Um, there's not a lot of difference in consumption. Most of these use two 2.5 kilowatt heaters. And as we'll see now on my meter, we'll be able to understand what the machine draws. So I'll just set it to 60 minutes. Now, I've got no way of starting this tumble dryer on a timer system and this is what I don't like because sometimes on old tumble dryers you were able to put an electronic timer on your plug and you could set a time to trick the machine into starting on its own at a preset time. So we'll just start the machine. As you can hear, I won't bore you, there's many other videos on sale pitches on the machine. I'm not selling the machine, I'm actually bringing you a review on how well it's made and we're going to look at the inside of the machine. Uh, so at the moment it's on half heat and we are pulling 5.97 amps. That in wattage is 1,400. We'll now turn it on to high heat. The high heat is running at 2.6 2.6 kilowatt and we are drawing 11 amp. I will just take this round to its 10 minute cooling down period and the heater just kicked out and with the motor running only blowing cold air it is drawing 80 watts which is very low. Uh, sorry 0.8 of an amp uh, 199 watts. Uh, it is very important with all these tumble dryers you whenever using the tumble dryer do not open the door to test if the clothes are dry on a constant basis you will damage the thermostatic system or the heater it is very important that whenever setting the time on a tumble dryer if it's 60 minutes 90 minutes you let the machine finish its cycle to the end this means you do not open the door and test the clothes and then shut the door you do not open the door go into the machine pull the clothes out because they're dry and leave it and it hasn't done its 10 minutes cooling down period if this happens you will damage the machine next thing i will tell you because i know these hot points do suffer a problem oh, and intercept machine sorry uh, if you overload them there is chances you will snap the belt because the belt does not run on a jockey wheel system. This is what you call a stretched belt system. It works perfectly well, but belts do snap on the machines, especially if the machine is misused and overloaded. So, my rant over. The first thing I would say is the vent tube that comes with the machine is a very good vent tube, but it's no good for people who use the tumble dryer in a non-fixed location. This means that if you're having to hang the pipe out of the window, this stain or this uh, metal pipe 
will not last. I'm not going to open this up, but this does stretch to 1.5 meters. Now, the one I would recommend if you're using it in a house to hang out the window, uh, at the website we sell these stretchy tubes. They've been about for many, many years, and on this tumble dryer it's using the 100 millimeter or four inch vent tube, and that's what you need to buy. And I believe these come all the way up to four or five meter in length, so you can buy them at 1.5, 2.5, and I believe four or five. Don't quote me on that, please. I can't remember what we stock in the sizes of those, but I do know we carry the four inch. So, the next thing we'll go into is the basic design and repairability on the machine, because you're not watching this for a view on how good it is and this, that, and the other. You want to know what's inside the box. Uh, the machine is one of the simplest machines to work on on the market with vented tumble dryers. You've got great access to the components on the machine. To change a belt is simple. To change a heater is simple. To change just about any component on this machine is simple if you take your time. And when I strip the machine down in a minute to have a look, I will explain all this to you. Okay, to dismantle the machine, really the only tools you're going to need is a small flathead screwdriver, made me a medium-sized flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and a pair of pin nose pliers would be useful. Uh, there are a few components on this machine where you will need spanners or sockets. Uh, they're normally 10 or 13 mil bolts. So before we take the lid off the machine, as the machine is facing this way, we're going to remove the plinth because there's a couple of screws here that you will need to access to remove the right hand side panel. This is predominantly where most of the components are accessible. So we'll just put this down. There's three little holes. You just pressure and then this panel will come away. Now you need to turn the machine round. You would normally be working on this at ground level, but I'm working on it up here just so you can actually see much better. Right, the back of the machine. As I said, the vent tube is on this side and it's four inch. You have a couple of screws going up the panel here, which we'll remove in the minute. The heating system is here and there are two small holes here to remove the heating element if it ever needs replacing. So to take the lid off, we will undo the two top screws. I'm actually going to lift the machine down to floor level because I need to show you some screws at the top. So I'll just lift this down. First, you need to take the lid off. Then give it a tap backwards and the lid will come away. We need to remove this supporting plate at the top and this is a new cover to stop any steam, I believe, going down on the electrics. And that's quite a good idea. The two screws on either side are the larger screws. And then you have two smaller screws in the middle. Once that's done, slide this back, lift it up, and that can come away. Right, down here there is one hidden screw. You can just see it there. And I'll use my normal hand screwdriver on this one. Now that was what I needed to film for you, so you could actually see. Uh, basic construction in here, as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same. You have the start button here, which is a micro switch. You have the timer, uh, which basically controls the whole machine. And then you have another micro switch on this side, which is the high low heat. I've managed to obtain you the wiring diagram for this machine. I do apologize about the picture quality, but I cannot actually get a proper diagram off the manufacturer as they don't disclose the information. A lot of manufacturers do not actually dish out the workshop manuals and wiring diagrams to the general public because they want their own engineers to fix the machines. And on this tumble dryer, for example, it only costs a couple of hundred pounds. Now, if you're calling an engineer out, 
and this is nothing to do with the engineers that may be watching this this is just the cost of living in the United Kingdom an engineer would have to charge roughly about 45 pound as a private engineer to come out to repair a tumble dryer then you've got the cost of the components and everything else on it and his labor and sometimes it might not be uneconomic to repair with an engineer if you were calling the manufacturer out I have heard that they charge in the region of 70 to 80 pound minimum uh, and sometimes this is just uneconomic especially on an appliance that only costs a couple of hundred pound so everything I've explained there now we'll lift the machine back up onto the worktop I've turned the machine sideways on because there's one more hidden screw so I will just lean the machine over one screw there doing this slightly cock-handed so you can see now once these two screws are done and we've undone the ones at the back the panel as you can see these grooves at the bottom this slides backwards slightly to allow the panel to be re released from the cabinet okay I'll just use my hand screwdriver and these are all small screws the ones I took out the front were the larger screws. Little cover plate. They have put a lot more support in the cabinet over the last few years. They used to be very flimsy at the front and very flimsy at the back, but they have put reinforcing into this now, which has made the cabinet better. That's one of the first things I notice. Okay, with the, all the screws undone, this now slides back and comes away. Okay, now we've got the side of the machine off, we can talk about all the components. And what the first thing I notice, which is a great improvement, they have put this plastic cover on to stop any dust going down into the motor. This is what would call the, cause the bearings to go on the motor over a long period of time. And it stops any humidity also getting onto the motor. And behind here should be a capacitor. And if I lift that up, you can see we've got the mains, for, mains cable coming into the machine to some type of suppressor, which is there to stop the interference with your other electrical appliances in the house. We have the capacitor, which is a common fault on all tumble dryers. If the tumble dryer is not turning, but the belt is intact and you can hear a humming noise, this predominantly would be the capacitor has lost its power and therefore might need replacing. Or the drum is jammed. That is also a possibility. But as you can see, the drum, this is a new machine, drum turns perfectly. So if the capacitor was gone, you would hear a humming noise. But I do like this extra cover. We'll remove that in a second. Next, this is the support wheel system that they have put on. I think this is a great idea because over the course of four or five years, the pear-shaped bearing, which we'll have a look at at the back, which is the bearing that goes through the drum with the shaft, they did have problems with that. And I think this is going to support the drum a lot more. Uh, I also noticed that down the front here, we now have two thermostats. Uh, and we'll look at the wiring diagram in a minute. And those two thermostats, I believe, are cutout thermostats. Uh, so they are designed to monitor the moisture and also the temperature going through the air duct. Because as the air is drawn into the machine, through the heating element, into the drum, down into the filter, it goes through here and then through the vent tube and, ex and out through the wall or window in your house. Uh, they've also put a cover down here covering the vent tubes at the bottom and I also know that they've put a supporting bracket in for the actual vent tube because it used to be made out of plastic uh, and now they're making it out of steel. Uh, this is the wiring for the heating element and there'll be some connections underneath here. So the first thing I'll do is remove this cover. This is where these pliers are very useful. You just press the clip, make sure you press the two lugs in, and then the clip will come away. And I'll also do underneath here, 
This allows me to remove the whole cover and give you easier access to see everything. Okay, I'll just put my torch in to make it a little bit easier for you to see. That should be okay there. So here are the two thermostats and I'll zoom in on the diagram as well on the side here so you can see. These thermostats are cutout stats. Okay, to remove the heating system, we're going to have to swing the machine round in a minute. Uh, I'll do the belt in a minute as well. So you've got the heater plug, and when you need a new heater for your tumble dryer, what you do is unplug the heater. There is one clip behind here that will release in a second. There are a selection of screws all around the heater. And this I actually do love. What they have done is they have insulated the heater whereby the heat, where it used to be just steel, the heat now is insulated and this means you are not going to lose so much energy with waste heat coming through the actual steel. This heat now is actually diverted inside the machine rather than it being wasted. So this is an improvement as well. One screw down the bottom here. I'm using a hand screwdriver now because we're next to this insulation. So I don't damage the insulation in any way. Just need to support that a second. There's only one more screw to undo. then this panel drops down. Sometimes this insulation will be sticky onto the surface, especially as the machine is being used. And this now can come away. And I will just support that a second, because down here you have this clip that I was on about. As you can see, and we need to release that. So just supporting this, I'm going to undo the clip and then the whole wiring can come away with the plug and we can have a look at the heater system. Okay, we've got the heater here and we've taken this off. The heater seems to have changed in design slightly from the old days, which is an improvement. Uh, they did have a lot of problems with the heater. And you also have three thermostats on this. They may be cutout thermostats or they may be cycling thermostats. I'll bring the diagram up on the screen now. And I do apologize about the picture quality. And these thermostats are called either cutout thermostats, which, which means that they're a one-shot thermostat. If they exceed their temperature, they will go open circuit and stay open circuit. Um, if they are cycling thermostats, they will go open circuit at a certain temperature, and then they will, as the machine cools down, the heater is cut out, then they will re-energize, become a circuit again, and electricity can pass through them. This is what controls the temperature on the tumble dryer. So there's the heating unit. The heaters for this are not expensive. Um, you can get these from us and basically easy to change if you need to replace it. And I'm not going to do that now. There is two screws, one here and one here, and they're very small screws. This then releases the heating element from here and hidden underneath this foam at the back or insulation, I can see that there are two more screws down the bottom. So you need to release those four screws to replace the element. Next, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to remove the belt and the drum from the machine. Now, on some occasions, you wouldn't need to remove these components, but it's always you're going to have to remove the heater when removing the belt. I'm also going to remove the drum as well, uh, just to show you all the bits and pieces throughout. So first thing I'm going to do is take the tension off the belt. 
Now the drum rotates round, and by the way, on this machine, this is an 1860 uh, H9 belt. This means that it's got nine grooves and it's one meter, 860 millimeter long. Uh, we stock all these belts at the website. So I'm just going to ease the belt over the shaft, just turning the drum slightly until the belt comes away. Now, a lot of people when they receive belts go, oh, it's not long enough. Uh, this is because it's a stretch belt and I'll show you how to put this on later. Okay, to remove the drum from the machine or to be able to change the belt, there are two techniques. One, you can remove the whole drum or the second one is we can undo the screws down this panel here and I would suggest only doing three. You may need to support the panel because we're going to ease the panel back. But the first thing we need to do is undo the bearing. Uh, this is called the pear-shaped bearing. So you have a little pin that goes through here. So straighten the pin up. Once the pin is straight, push the pin through, take the pin out, put that safe, then the cover comes away. Now we don't need to replace the pear-shaped bearing. The pear-shaped bearing wears, and this is made of phosphorus bronze onto a steel shaft. Whenever a problem occurs with your tumble dryer, it's well worth inspecting this bearing to make sure that it hasn't worn. As you can see, it's a perfectly round hole in the middle where the shaft comes through. When they wear, they start to wear the phosphorus bronze and it will create like a pear shape uh, wear mark going through it. So I'll just show you how to remove this. And this is a torque 20, I believe, or torque 15. And that screw comes out. Then you can use, just wiggle it round and it comes away. And I'm going to bring this for the camera for you. And I'll try and zoom in on this. And as you can see here, there is no wear at all on this bearing. And this, of course, it's a brand new machine, is in perfect condition. But this is a common fault on these machines. They seem to have rectified a lot of the problem, uh, but it will wear over the course of time because you'd get a lot of dust in a tumble dryer and this becomes like a grinding paste. So with that away, we will be able to ease this panel back once we've done these three screws. So I'm just going to undo these three screws. If you wanted to go into more depth, you could actually remove this side panel as well, but that would be stripping most of the machine down completely. Now this panel, because I've eased this back, will move a little, but I also need to remove this vent cover. Put a little screwdriver in, just prise that up, it twists, and you can take out the whole of the vent tube. As I said, this used to be plastic. Now the panel will come back a little bit further, and this drops down. This means that now we are able to extract either the whole drum out of the machine, which would be good for a maintenance purpose, or we can just slide the belt off and let me show you that. So if you wanted to replace the belt without taking the drum off, and don't forget if your belt was snapped, therefore you would be putting a new belt on, you just drop the belt down, take it over the shaft, and the belt can come away. But I'm also going to take the drum out of the machine for you so you can actually see the rest of the construction on the machine. I'm going to ease the drum backwards, lift it up slightly, and then carefully making sure not to damage any of the seals, take the drum out.
Now the first thing I will show you is this actual bearing system. If it ever needs replacing, I have done a previous video on this on how to remove a pot riveted drum spider from these tumble dryers. It's quite an old video, uh, but it's the same technique as it is today. This is exactly the same type of component and you will need to drill out these rivets and make sure there's no sharp edges, but that's in another video. So that is the bearing and the shaft all taken care of and the belt. And let's just have a quick look inside the machine. Okay, so there we have the machine completely stripped down. And I will inform you that there is another thermostat at the top here which is a safety uh, thermostat. They have really gone to town putting these safety thermostats on this machine to make it a very safe machine. Uh, it may cause you problems if you use the machine incorrectly and open the door and make the machine overheat accidentally. A thermostat or a cutout stat may blow, but you know where they all are and you're able to test these as I showed you. The other confusing factor that I found was on this model of machine, they only use one support wheel because they have put two larger pads on the other side. On some models of machine, you may find that there are two wheels because the bracket is at the back for the other wheel. But in the exploded diagram you can see above, this is what was confusing me, is they actually show two jockey support wheels. But there is only one fitted to this model of machine and they have two large pads here which are replaceable uh, when you come to servicing the machine. Remember, whenever you do any work on the machine, make sure that you always really go to town in vacuuming and cleaning the machine. Make sure that all the fluff is removed and everything is spick and span inside this vent tube. Take out the filter, clean all inside there. All the parts for this machine are available at How to Repair. Uh, all you need is your full model number typed correctly as is written on the machine, which I will show you up here. Uh, we should have everything in stock. Okay, in general, this machine is well constructed and thought has been put in with regards maintaining the machine. It may not be the best vented tumble dryer on the market, but I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 for the simple reason the parts are affordable, the machine is easy to service, and the construction is not bad. It does have its faults, but all mechanical items do have their faults and manufacturers try to rectify it. Compared to what the hot point intercept tumble dryer was, 15, 20 years ago, and as you can see with the amount of thermostats and cutout stats that they've put on the machine, safety has been brought to attention. This means that the manufacturer ha is aware of what has happened in the past and they have rectified the problem. So I'm quite happy with the machine. Now in the description below is some extra links to other videos on how to maintain this machine and how to service this machine. And I'm also going to do two other videos for you, one on replacing the belt, an up-to-date one, and also because there are six thermostats on this machine, I will do a video on the heating system and how to check all the thermostats and heater. Now there are affiliate links below where we win a small commission off the superstores for if you click on the link to buy an appliance from them. Uh, this does help the website and help me to buy more machines to produce videos for you. I hope you found this video helpful. And remember, if we really helped you in making a decision, please click on the Buy Paula Beer page and that will help the website no end. Thanks very much indeed for watching this video and please remember to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.